Welcome to Intro to Graffiti Quilting. I'm Holly Ann Knight, artist at String and Story, and I love teaching you how to quilt. The first method of graffiti quilting that I would like to teach you is where I began. And rather than simply going into an area of quilting and going crazy, this is a good way to kind of introduce yourself. So I start with a double loop design. This works particularly well in borders. Um, but you could really do it in any area of quilting. You just kind of loop it back on your on itself like I'm doing here. And once you reach the end of that loopy design, then you're going to begin adding other shapes. So I might echo this swooping shape over and over and over again, and then add some paisleys to fill it in, which you'll notice that shape is very similar to the double loop. It'll add to the coherent look of the whole. And then from here, I might add some swirls. And I just work my way around the quilting. I can add echoes if I need to move to another area, or I could retrace previous lines of stitching as well to move around, add pebbles. And with both of these methods of quilting that I'm gonna, or graffiti quilting that I'm gonna be talking with you about, if you get stuck, just pick your favorite motif and do it for a while. So my three go-tos when I'm graffiti quilting are paisleys, swirls, and pebbles. And I just add them over and over and over again to fill in a space. You can also add familiar border designs like switchbacks or that was going to be ribbon candy, but I didn't transition very well, did I? But you'll just use this to fill in the whole area where you're quilting. Now, the second method of graffiti quilting is simply to go in and go to town. This is what I'm doing on my spools quilt right now, if you're following with the piece and quilt hop along, um, is I'm not creating that initial structure, but you know, I'm finding that it goes more slowly. And I think that that's because I have done more graffiti quilting by creating that double loop structure and I'm just learning something new. And it's okay that it is moving more slowly. And that's just an area where I need to practice. And you may um, find that as you first begin this technique that you have to quilt slowly because you feel like you're thinking a lot. But over time, you'll find that the designs flow more freely. Now when I'm graffiti quilting, I do tend to use all curvy designs. I think they um, just come together more smoothly. It's easier to transition from one design to the next if they have sort of common structural points. You notice there I paused and did a funky little paisley off onto the side to fill in that space and then I can retrace to come over here and add some pebbles and just continue filling in. And what I'm doing right now is I'm drawing on this paper. This is exactly what you can do to practice graffiti quilting, especially um, if this is very new to you or you're new to free motion quilting in general. Once you have a few designs under your belt that you can jump in to graffiti quilting, you don't need to wait until you have an enormous personal library of shapes. You just repeat the same shapes over and over again in different and funky ways. Um, but practice by drawing so you don't have to be worried about how it might turn out on your quilt. You can see there, even in my drawing, some of this is a little funky and that's okay. It smooths out with practice. And what I've been doing a lot lately is I like just adding not quite feather petals onto the backs of my swirls, more like little flower petals. And then trace around it and close that shape. And you just keep building over and over and over again as you work. You can see they create slightly different looks, but both are wonderful ways to add a graffiti quilting texture to your quilts.